live streaming is on sir okay okay fine I'm putting for recording. Another two minutes, sir. We will start. Okay. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Yes, sir.
गुड इवनिंग एवरी वन सर शलविश स्टार्ट यस गुड इवनिंग दिस इज बी एम एन टी एफ एस ए वी आर कंडक्टिंग दि ऑनलाइन ऑफलाइन मोड ट्रेनिंग प्रोग्राम फॉर निर्मित केंद्र इंजीनियर एंड ईवन इन असोसियशन वित् नागार्जुन कॉलेज आफ् इंजीनियरी एंड टेक्नजी टूडे वी आर वित् आईन मोड and uh, today we have uh, uh, dr r nagendra with us uh, uh, i welcome all uh, nirmiti kendra engineers for this uh, particular uh, uh, upskilling and uh, master training program uh, which is conducted through bmnt bfsa uh, so today we have uh, a speaker with us uh, dr r nagendra uh, sir completed uh, his be from mallard college of engineering Mysore University in 1984 uh, joined as a lecturer at KBP College of Engineering uh, Shastra Maharashtra ME from uh, Walchand College of uh, Engineering Sangli in 1990 joined Saw Steel Research Foundation in India uh, Bangalore 1998 he got his phd degree from uh, UVC Bangalore University in 2012 Uh, dr nagendra uh, nagendra is presently working as a senior director at uh, sedrent uh, uh, tech techno clinic private limited uh, bangalore a civil engineering consultancy company providing uh, services for uh, proof checking of designs and advisory services advisor services laboratory testing of con uh, construction material components and uh, special tests structural uh, soundness and evaluation of old and new structures geotechnical investigation and foundation design non destructive testing of rc and steel structures quality assurance quality audit of constructions structural design and consultancy services earlier he was a technical director at civilaid techno clinic private limited and beru vatiles india private limited bangalore he is an enable auditor uh, since uh, 2005 and has conducted more than 100 audits uh, of nabl accredited labs all over india member of uh, C- cd2 2 is to 2 committee of bureau of uh, indian standards new delhi and uh, uh, member of sub committees related to preparation of standard life member of indian concrete uh, institute association of consulting acc uh, consulting uh, civil engineer indian institute of engineers indian society of technical and chartered engineer uh, his field of interest is testing of building and highway materials as per bis uh, and astm bs and en and uh, mort uh, standards special test on new construction materials and uh, structural system test on repair materials design of normal concrete mixes high performance concrete high volume fly ash concrete and self compacting concrete concrete ready mix concrete and uh, certification of non destructive destructive testing uh, precast concrete products and green building materials and systems and sir has a vast experience in this particular field uh, we 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 are fortunate enough to learn from him uh, all our uh, nirmita K- uh, kendra engineers they have to take uh, uh, some of the inputs from the uh, sir and which will be useful for your upskilling and reskilling of uh, the nirmati kendra uh, sir uh, we i welcome for this uh, webinar and uh, uh, it is for you sir now you can take over the session yeah uh, thank you very much uh, mr sanat kumar uh, i would like to thank uh, the organizers of this uh, uh, particular online uh, lectures uh, for giving me an opportunity uh, to present uh, whatever uh, i have gained Uh, through the last two or three decades uh, in my professional work as well as uh, teaching work <clears throat> initially to start with teaching work and then uh, all the while for last 25 years uh, i am with uh, uh, testing laboratories and also consultancy uh, companies i hope i am audible um, yes sir uh, also my slides are visible to everybody okay yes sir uh, so today's presentation uh, is on Uh, quality control through testing of construction materials we are all very much uh, would like to have a good quality construction in each and every aspect of uh, 
whether it is a building construction or infrastructure or whether it is any uh, work, uh, related to uh, water irrigation or any such uh, related uh, treatment plants, uh, all such uh, irrigation works and all, we would like to have a quality construction. For achieving the quality control uh, in constructions, there are two levels of quality control. The first level of quality control is selection of good materials, selection of quality materials. For this, we need to uh, do a good sampling of materials. We need to test in a laboratory which is having the required facilities, which has got the required manpower, required facilities, uh, and also moreover nowadays the accreditation is uh, ensuring indirectly uh, the quality of the laboratory or I can say competence of the laboratory. So for all these things, we need to uh, have the quality of the materials through testing. So testing of construction materials for their quality is the first level of quality control. It's not enough if you have a good materials for construction, good quality materials for construction, you need to have a good quality control at site also. Good construction practices are also very much essential. Good construction practices are the second level of quality control. So when you ensure uh, a good control, both in first level as well as second level, then only we can end up in structures uh, which are durable, sustainable, and also long lasting. So very purpose is to construct a durable, long lasting uh, buildings or structures, whatever we are aiming to. So quality control is a process itself through a very good documentation, uh, through a very good uh, uh, policy, through a very good uh, method of uh, uh, standard operating procedures, uh, we need to ensure quality control both at first level as well as second level. So, uh, okay, already uh, regarding my company, it was uh, informed to you all. Uh, I work uh, in a company called Stadrant Techno Clinic Private Limited. Uh, we were earlier with Civil Aid or Bureau Veritas. Uh, and tar steel also. So we are having more than 35 to 40 years of experience uh, carrying out uh, uh, at present operations in Bangalore as well as in Hyderabad in the field of uh, proof checking of uh, designs, advisory services, laboratory testing of construction materials, which includes A to Z, most of the construction materials in the field of mechanical testing. Mechanical testing is nothing but physical properties of the materials. And also in the field of chemical testing, the chemical parameters play a very important role in order to realize the uh, physical characteristics, physical properties of the material. And the third category of uh, uh, testing is non-destructive testing. The first two are destructive testing, the, that is mechanical testing and chemical testing, whereas the third one is called as uh, <clears throat> non-destructive testing in which we find out the in-situ strength of the materials whether the material used in the construction or in the concrete members are okay or not, whether they comply to the requirements or not. So that is a non-destructive testing. Then the components and special tests, there are many, many components nowadays coming, new materials are coming into the market. These are all can be tested as a whole. It can be a requirement of a particular industry for a precast industry, for a normal construction industry, or it may be for some of the mechanical industries we do check all these type of components through special test. Structural soundness and evaluation of old and new structures is an area where people want to know how sound their structure is, their building is, whether uh, it can withstand the additional loads that are coming or whether it has uh, disintegrated or whether it has undergone distress. To know, know these things, uh, whether it is strength or whether it is a corrosion related issues, for all these things, structural soundness and evaluation of both old and new structures. Normally, old structures are tested or, uh, for its uh, structural soundness uh, from the point of view of uh, knowing the present state of the building. And also, if somebody wants to build uh, some more floors, uh, <coughs> additional floors, the structural soundness of old building is required. So then where do the question of uh, uh, structural soundness and evaluation of new structures? Sometimes in a quality control plan, People use uh, the non-destructive methods to know the in-situ uh, status of the uh, members. Whatever, whatever the uh, specifications are there, as per that, 
uh, whether the because you know through materials we know the properties of the materials but after the construction whether it is giving functional requirements whether it is passing the functional requirements there is no leakage or uh, there is no cracks in the structures for all these things the new structures are also subjected subjected to non destructive test to evaluate its structural soundness as well as its uh, uh, present status then geotechnical investigations and foundation design this is another area where uh, we are working geotechnical investigation is a part and parcel of any construction to start with we need to do this so we have been doing this then already i told you about non destructive testing of rc and steel structures steel structures are also subjected to ndt uh, normally in the joints the welding has been done the integrity of the welding uh, whether there is any dive, uh, there are any blow holes in it uh, whether the uh, whether the welder is a qualified welder or not for all these things steel structure uh, non destructive testing is also essential then quality assurance or quality audit of constructions this is again another area wherein uh, we sometimes involve in the quality assurance of the concrete constructions so uh, we restrict it to only concrete construction that is quality assurance of construction quality audit is something you know where whether the construction has been done or the as per the specifications tender specification or the project specifications we verify uh, through this uh, auditing of uh, audit of constructions then structural designs and consultancy services is another area where some new structures design normally we don't go, go for the uh, new structural design normally structural design is done by uh, leading consultants structural consultants we do what is called as proof checking or peer review of the peer uh, of the constructions so the most essential aspect in any construction is to achieve the strength the serviceability and durability our aim is to have a strong building or strong structure and also it should be serviceable for the intended service life and also durable uh, under all environmental conditions whatever may be the environmental conditions the concrete structure should be or the whatever we have built built environment should be durable quality norms are prescribed what are the norms we follow these are normally prescribed through uh, specifications Uh, standards uh, codes of practice and of course project to project people they have formulated their own uh, standard good construction practices so good construction practice is more important unless you follow these good construction practices it is not possible to have a quality constructions even though the materials are of very good quality so in view of this uh, we need to have a very good quality control plan that will ensure the quality in constructions normally these are laid down in the conditions of contract conditions of contract for any any contract these are already uh, included in the conditions even though it is obligatory on the contractor to comply to these quality aspects sometimes the client can have a uh, check a separate check on the quality through quality control and quality assurance so qaqc is what a client may would like to have uh, regarding the quality of constructions the principle is if you look into all these things prevention is better than cure don't allow anything to be rectified later it is better to adopt the quality construction practices in the beginning itself it should become Uh, one of the most important uh, area in any construction activity so prevention is always helps because queuing cure means uh, remedial measures is a very costly affair remedial measures or the repair works will, will be very very costly and sometimes in time bound projects if something goes wrong that becomes still more costly so prevention is always better so we need to check the quality of the construction materials and all the quality of the constructions through good construction practices now <clears throat> we call it a destructive testing so destructive testing uh, of materials is a part of a material verification process to check the properties meet the specifications of the engineer's design of a member and structures with material compliance with the regulatory body standards so there can be many regulatory body standards so the contracts they will be sometimes depending upon the importance of the work one may go for only indian standard specifications bureau of indian standards or if it is a infrastructure projects there will be ministry of road transport and highways 
and also in case of railways, we have Indian Road uh, Congress. NHA specifications are also there, National Highway uh, Authority of India specification. So like this, uh, many times even Central PWD has got its own uh, specifications. Uh, Indian Railways has got its own specification. Then project specifications are also there, depending upon the project. One may have sometimes very stringent specifications than uh, what is specified in Indian standards. So like this, there are many regulatory bodies uh, which will give the requirements uh, to check whether a particular material uh, complains to the complies to the requirements or not. So destructive testing is what we do. We do not get uh, anything. Uh, we need to uh, we can't uh, keep the material as it is during the process of testing. Uh, the materials get uh, uh, destroyed. So, uh, but if you have more materials, you need to keep them so that in case of any uh, dispute or any uh, disagreement, uh, you can carry out the test once again to check the repeatability of results, uh, uh, the competence of the person. So the regulatory bodies gives different requirements for different materials. So these are all uh, the compared with the, uh, the obtained values are compared with the uh, standard values uh, to uh, either accept or reject a particular material. Let us go through the uh, discussion of this uh, uh, various uh, construction materials through selection of proper materials for construction, the importance of testing, uh, sampling of materials, acceptance criteria as per uh, relevant uh, regulatory bodies such as Bureau of Indian Standard recommendations. So selection of proper materials is very important. Many times what happens, we, we normally pick the materials from the site. When you are picking the materials from the site, Somebody, uh, engineer or the in charge of the, will instruct uh, his subordinates, uh, get the materials, collect the materials and send it to a laboratory for testing. Suppose the person who selects the material is not having the required knowledge. Uh, to give an example, we want to send the course aggregate to the laboratory for testing. So he will say, you take uh, materials for testing. For him, all aggregates which are bigger in size are good materials. So what he can do, what he may do, he may select all the big size materials, put a coarse aggregates, he put it in a bag and send it to a laboratory for testing. For him, selection of material is not a representative material. Whatever he feels good, he will select it and send it to laboratory. The laboratory result may indicate these are all oversized aggregates. These aggregates do not comply to the grading requirements as per AS383. So, so this is what it can happen if one doesn't know uh, what to select and what to send. Suppose a steel uh, is to be sent to a laboratory for testing. So steel bar will be normally in a bent portion. So that is of 36 feet length or something like that. So in the bent portion, if you send the sample for the testing, so that will that may not give always correct results. So there is a procedure to even select uh, the, the steel also. So proper way of uh, selection of materials for uh, proper selection of materials for construction not only for testing, but also for the use. Normally, one go through the uh, material uh, test certificate. Material certificate gives an idea because depending upon the uh, company, company policies, the material test certificate will give a lot of information. It will, be, it will give the results. But normally what we do, when we use materials continuously at site, there is a, some, there is a frequency of testing. As per this frequency of testing, uh, materials are sent to the laboratory for testing. So that is why uh, selection of proper material for construction depends upon the experience of the person and also the test results and also the availability of the material. Moreover, the uh, material suppliers standing, how good the material is, what are the production controls they have. Suppose if it comes to ready mix concrete, uh, we know that uh, nowadays uh, quality control of India certifies ready mix concrete plants. So people go for uh, RMC plants, uh, which are certified by QCA, Quality Control of India. That gives uh, some sort of confidence, the quality of the concrete that is from, coming from a uh, QCA certified plant will be good because the plant would have gone through the accreditation process by way of uh, subjecting itself to the audit assessment for the production facilities uh, they are having uh, to uh, produce the concrete using the materials, various materials. 
Now, importance of testing. Why we need to test the material? Because the properties of the materials are included, are considered in the design. Whether it is a RCC design or whether it is a steel design, the properties of the materials are considered in the design. So when you are uh, cons when you are considered the properties of the material in the design, uh, it is expected that the uh, properties meet the requirements, whatever is considered. If you do not meet the requirements, uh, then there is some problem with the construction. So this is what it can happen. So uh, the importance is lies here. We need to know the properties of the materials because uh, we, the, those things have been taken into account while doing so many calculations in the design and things like that. Sampling of materials. So proper sampling plays a very important role. Uh, you need to select the materials properly. There are uh, ways of uh, doing the sampling. As I already told you, uh, you should select. Uh, suppose if it is a coarse aggregate, you may be required to select in a quartering method or if it, if it is a uh, steel or if it is a bricks or blocks, you should select randomly from the whole lot. Then after that, you will be conducting the test and you will be getting a test report and we need to check the acceptance criteria as per the uh, relevant Bureau of Indian Standards recommendations. Now, some of the materials which we will be discussing today includes cement, in the aggregates, fine aggregate, coarse aggregate, water, then concrete itself, then steel, bricks, blocks, and foreign tiles. So these are all the materials which will be considered for today's discussion. Now, when it comes to cement, we can broadly classify cement into two categories in the market. One is ordinary Portland cement, another is blended cement. So ordinary Portland cement are normally of three grades, 33rd grade, 43rd grade, and 53rd grade. Of course, nowadays, 43rd grade, 30, 33rd grade is not at all manufactured in the country. It is only 43 and 53rd grades of cement which are available. That too, uh, depending upon the cement plants, uh, you may have only 43rd grade cement or only 53rd grade cement. So there again, the bifurcation comes between 43 and 53rd grade. So one should be, uh, uh, should use the material or the grade of the cement, whatever it has been specified in the uh, conditions of con contract or the <coughs> project specifications. The second category already I told you, blended cement. A blended cement can be a PPC cement or a PAC cement. When you use an industrial product, industrial byproduct such as fly ash, then the cement made using fly ash is called as Portland Pozzolana cement. So fly ash is generated in the thermal power plants. So thermal power plant produces a lot of fly ash when the coal is burnt. When the, when the fuel, fossil fuel is burnt, you will get the um, uh, fly ash. And this fly ash or ash is used, is used, is blended along with the clinkers to make the PPC blended cement. Now again, what is PSC? PSC is again a cement which is made using another industrial waste called slag. Slag is generated in the steel manufacturing plants. So slag is generated in the steel manufacturing plant and these uh, slag are used in the manufacture of PSC. Then what are the percentage of uh, these uh, slags? If it is a ground granulated blast furnace slag, we, use, we can use a minimum of 25% and maximum of 70%. Now, we have a standard for GGPS. That standard is IS16714, which gives both physical properties as well as chemical properties as per the individual uh, requirements and specifications. Then another um, uh, fly ash. Fly ash is called cement made with fly ash is called as PPC. Cement made with slag is called as PSC. Fly ash uh, minimum uh, is 15% and maximum is 35%. So like Whereas in case of GGBS, we have 25% to 70% range. Whereas in case of layage, it is 15% to 35% in making the concrete, this thing can be used. And also same thing applies for the production of cement also, minimum and maximum for slag as well as for the uh, fly ash. So there is a standard for pulverized fuel ash or fly ash. Uh, it is called as, it is the, the standard name, standard number is IS3812 part one. So, we know that PPC is a Portland Pozzolana cement and PS is a Portland slag cement. And there are uh, particular standards for this cement also, like how we have 
uh, IS 229 uh, for, uh, uh, for uh, ordinary Portland cement and PPC it is IS 1489 and for PSA it is IS 5. Now, before we go to the laboratory test on cement, let us try to understand some of the things, uh, how we can observe at site the cement. Appearance of cement is, should be uniform color. There is no particular color, but normally we say, if it is an ordinary Portland cement, it is greenish gray color. So greenish gray color is the color of the cement, and uh, uh, the color should be uniform as possible if it is PPC or PSC. If the color changes there, that indicates an adulteration. So uh, the colors, there should not be any visible lumps in the bag. If the visible lumps are present, if, they, if you put a bag, hand into the bag, if you are getting the lumps inside the cement bag, that means the cement has come in contact with the moisture. So when the cement comes in contact with the moisture, it becomes a hard mass and lumps will be formed. So you should see that the visible lumps are not present. Then another uh, requirement is uh, the feeling cool when hand is inserted into the bag. This is always not true because cement manufactured uh, in the uh, plant normally get used uh, very early. So uh, that means very fast uh, usage will be there. So in that, so in that case, cement will not be hot, uh, will not be cool always it will be instead hot. So a hot cement, if it is brought to the site, what happens? Is there any concern? Because if it is hot, only the water demand slightly increases. Other than that, uh, there is no issue uh, with respect to the, uh, if the cement is not cool, uh, if it is hot. But why it is cool means, suppose if the clinker is cooled and then it is grinded and all, uh, then uh, we can say that it can be slightly cool. But uh, because of the grinding also, the temperature may increase. So the, the, the cement, if it is hot, nothing to worry. Uh, the water demand might slightly increase. So these are all some of the field observations continuing with do not mix different types of cement because normally at site, you may have different types of cement. OPC may be there, PPC may be there, PSC may be there. Do not mix two different types of cement when you want to use for anything, whether it's a plastering or whether it is... Um, uh, whether it's a plastering or whether it's a masonry work or whether it's a concrete work, do not mix different types of cement because different types of cement will have different way of hydration. So you, need, you should be extremely careful and uh, you, if it is stored in the go down, do not mix the different types of cement. All cement should be fresh when delivered. How do you ensure this? To ensure this, you need to check the uh, print on the bag. What is the week number? What is the production number? from where it is uh, produced, which plant it is produced. And consignment shall be used in the art of the delivery. Consignment shall be used in the art of the delivery means what? As and, as and when it comes, you know, we go on storing from the, uh, from the backside. So go on storing from the backside, uh, that is from, from the front side, the cement which is stored at the backside will remain there only. So we should see that the order in which the cement uh, is stacked, of course, nowadays, uh, cement stacking is very less. RMC plants, they have their own silos uh, and uh, they go on consuming the cement. But for the site, we need to store the cement, but do not use the cement uh, in the art of the delivery. So consignment shall be used in the art of the delivery. As soon as the cement bags are received at the site, the bag shall be verified for the air tightness, date of manufacturing and grade. So if you look at any cement bags, whether it is a Ramco, JK Super, ACC or Ultratech, every, every manufacturer put IS mark on it. To which standard this particular thing uh, uh, corresponds to. So IS standard, the details, and whether it is a PPC cement or PSC cement, uh, what is the license number, and uh, any performance enhancers are added to the uh, cement manufacturing or not. All this information uh, you will get uh, when you uh, when you when you look carefully on the bag of the cement, lot of information you can get about the cement from the bag. So one should really see. At least, if you do not observe anything, please observe. Please observe the weak number. The weak number gives you an idea whether the cement is fresh or old. So weak number should be verified. Weak number one, two, three, four, up to fifty-two week in a year. The weak number will be there. Some people, sometimes the date of manufacturing is also mentioned, 
at least if the weak number is there, that gives a good idea uh, whether how whatever the quality of the cement. Then feeling smooth, not gritty when cement is rubbed with the fingers. So this is what you know uh, will give you an idea how fine cement is. The fineness of cement is very important. If the cement is not fine, active hydration will not take place. So feeling smooth and not gritty when cement is rubbed with fingers. So when handful of cement is dipped in water, the particles should float for some time before they sank. So you have to ensure this. The, the cement is having uh, sufficient specific gravity or not, because the specific gravity of water is one, where the specific gravity of cement is uh, 3.15. Cement particles here are heavier. They will only float for some time and then slowly they will start sinking into the bottom of the bucket of water. So this is a very important aspect. When cement, cement paste, when cement, neat cement paste kept in open atmosphere for about six to 10 hours, the same should form a hard lung. So that means this indicates there is no setting or hardening issue with respect to the cement. So this is a very simple field test. You can keep a cement place in the open atmosphere for about six to 10 hours. The same should be from hard lung. So this gives an idea of setting or hardening property of the cement. Now, <clears throat> of course, these are all only to where you, wherever you do not have a lab testing facility, uh, in such cases, you can follow these physical observations. But when it comes to uh, certify the quality of the uh, cement, we need to conduct many laboratory tests. So these laboratory tests include compressive strength of uh, cement, uh, fineness of cement, soundness of cement, setting time of cement, it is preferable to test a sample for each consignment. So for each consignment, when a truckload of cement comes to the site, so that is one consignment. For each consignment, you see that uh, a sample is sent to the laboratory and tested with a proper sampling method. So uh, these are the uh, laboratory tests. Cement sample needs to be tested under stringent uh, conditions of temperature and humidity. So this is a very important aspect one, one should understand. For all tests except fineness, temperature in the in the, in the setting in the cement laboratory should be plus or minus two degrees Celsius always. Cement testing room should have very stringent uh, temperature and humidity uh, arrangements. Humidity control, temperature control should be there. So humidity in the cement testing room should be more than sixty five percent in the testing area. Suppose. If you want to find out the fineness of cement using blinds operators, the fineness, uh, the, in the fineness area, wherever you are conducting the test, the fineness, uh, the, uh, the maximum humidity shall be 65%. It should not cross 65%. Otherwise, the results of fineness gets affected. So for all other tests except fineness, the humidity should be more than 65% for, for finding out the fineness of cement the, uh, the humidity shall be less than 65%. So cement mortar shall be kept under temperature of 27%. After casting the cement, why do we cast cement mortar? Cement, what is cement mortar? Cement and standard sand. Standard sand obtained from the NOR in Tamil Nadu. This is used to check the compressive strength of cement. So cement mortar cubes are cast and they shall be kept in the humidity room or humidity chamber which is having a humidity more than 90%. So these are the requirements which are really need to look into in, the, in a testing laboratory, without which the results will, will vary. You will not get reliable results. The results can change. Now, let us come to the requirements as per relevant course, IS-269. IS-269 uh, gives the requirements for 33 grade cement, 43 grade cement, and 53 grade cement. So minimum compressive strength for three days, seven days, and 28 days is given here. 16, 22, 33 for a 33 grade cement. 23, 33, and 43 for a 43 grade cement. And 27, 37, and 53 for a 53 grade cement. So when you cast cement mortar cubes, as per the standard procedure, in the ratio of one is to three, one being cement and three being the standard sand, Using a vibrator, which is maintained, which is which has maintained a RPM of twelve thousand plus or minus four hundred, and casting the mortar cubes for two minutes, 
then keeping it in humidity chamber for 24 hours to prevent the mass of moisture moisture from the matter cube then after after that demolding the matter cubes and immersing into the water tank which is maintained at a temperature of 27 plus or minus 2 degrees celsius then these cubes are water cubes are tested at 3 days 7 days and 28 days and the values what we get should be more than what i have shown in this slide other than strength we have fineness fineness is 225 meters square per kg this is nothing but uh, one if you take 1 kg of cement the surface area of each and every particle should be 225 square meter so it's very difficult to find out the uh, very difficult to find out the area of particles but we have a blinds method using that blinds method we find out the uh, temperature uh, i can say this uh, fineness of the cement setting time setting time is the one which is really a minimum initial setting time is required 30 minutes minimum is required and the final setting time is 600 minutes required so if it is less than 30 minutes we cannot mix the concrete we cannot transport the concrete we cannot place the concrete so there should be minimum of about 100 minutes initial setting time and final setting time uh, shall not be more than 600 because if it is more than 600 minutes we do not know it can be any value so that is an indication that cement is concrete is not at all setting so even though setting time of cement and setting time of concrete both are different but it gives an idea setting time of cement gives the setting time of cement is a test which uh, which is used to accept or reject cement whereas setting time of concrete is done only when you are using a chemical admixture whether the concrete setting is affected because of the presence of admixture so concrete setting time procedure is different cement setting time test procedure is different cement uh, setting time test procedure is only for the quality control checking of the cement whereas there is a there is a setting time uh, test for concrete also which is only to check the effect of chemical admixtures on the concrete another test what we do is normally soundness test soundness test gives the uh, uh, the presence of free lime or magnesium oxide free lime is determined through lecher layers test and autoclave test gives the presence of mgo in it so these are the requirement 10 mm maximum is allowed for uh, lecher layers test and autoclave test it is 0.8% maximum allowed. This is the expansion which is allowed. Then physical characteristics of Portland slag cement and Portland puzzle cement. So this is given in this table. So normally these are like a 30 grade cement. Even though we get higher values, but these are not really uh, uh, having a very good uh, strength as compared to ordinary Portland cement. So we have PSC, PPC, uh, PPC again two one is uh, uh, one is uh, fly ash based and another is calcium clay based. Then the last one is SRC sulfur resisting cement. This is not manufactured using any uh, industrial waste, but but this is uh, controlling the C3A content. The SRC is manufactured for the for the conditions where uh, sulfate is required to be controlled or the effect of sulfate is to be controlled. Then this particular cement is used, such as in sewage works. Sewage treatment parts. Of course, blended cements are also giving a superior uh, sulfate and chloride resistance properties. So you can use blended cements or SRC cement. So these are the strength requirements. And similarly, for the fineness, starting time, soundness, the code gives the values uh, for the uh, uh, for various properties of cement. For the whether it is a PPC cement or PSC cement. Now, after understanding some information. Uh, after discussing about cement, let us go to another important uh, uh, concrete making material called water. So water is a very essential and very important material. And uh, uh, this particular material uh, should be clean, fresh, free from impurities, organic or inorganic that may impair the strength and durability of the concrete. Potable water is generally considered as satisfactory for mixing concrete. Water shall be obtained from the public supply wherever possible and shall be taken from any other source only if it is approved. Then how to approve a water source? So we have to carry out the tests on it. So do not use the brackish water or we do not use uh, uh, the uh, water from excavation. Many times during the excavation sites, we get the water. 
people uh, tend to use this excavation water for making the concrete or sometimes for curing and all. So water used for mixing and curing shall be clean. The water used for curing should be of the same quality as that of used for the mixing also. So water used for mixing and curing shall be clean and free from injurious uh, amounts of oils, acids, alkalis, salts, sugar. Many times what happens at sites, you know, they use some drum obtained from any chemical industry. And if your eye, suppose if it contains sugar or something like that, the setting properties of the concrete get seriously affected. So you should see that the storage, whatever is there at the site before uh, using the water for mixing the concrete, that storage should be of good quality and good uh, this thing. Then suppose if you want to check the uh, particular source, whether it is okay or not, uh, you have to carry out many tests, tests for alkalinity, tests for inorganic solids, tests for sulfates and chlorides, tests for suspended solids, tests for organic impurities. It is preferable to test a sample from each source. Do not assume that this source is nearby that source, so we need not test again and like that. But better, whenever there is a change in source of the water, it is always preferable to get it tested from the laboratory because we are, we are spending so much money on concrete because of the water, the concrete should not get affected. So the quality of the water is also equally important. There are codes like IS456 gives the requirements for water and uh, IS3025 uh, uh, gives the method of test for the water. So method of sampling uh, for water and wastewater. Now, let us come to the uh, specification part. The specification given in IS456 uh, when tested as IS3025. So uh, this particulars, uh, whether it is a alkalinity test or acidity test, the first one is an alkalinity test, a quantity of 0 0.02 normal NaOH required to neutralize 100 ml of water sample using phenolphthalein as an indicator shall not be more than 5 ml. So this is a requirement. When you do the titration of the water using this procedure, so the titration value shall not be more than 5 ml. Similarly, for the acidic uh, test, uh, the quantity of 0 0.02 hydro, uh, hydro, hydrosulfuric acid, sulfuric acid uh, H2SO4 required to neutralize 100 ml of water sample using a mixer indicator shall not be more than 25 ml. So this particular parameter many times doesn't confirm. If you take a sample from the bore well, many times this may not confirm. So like this, uh, the uh, alkalinity test and acidity test are important. The third one is Inorganic solids, the value is maximum 3000. Sulfates as SO4, maximum value is 400 milligram per liter. And chlorides is 500 milligram if it is the water used for RCC works. And it is 2000 maximum for if it is water used for PCC works. Then suspended matter shall not be more than 2000. Then another two parameters are there. Inorganic solids are restricted to 200 maximum. Then pH value. pH value is a very good indicator because another is chloride value. Chloride is 500 milligram per liter, whereas pH is uh, not less than six. These two will give a very good indication whether the water quality is good or not. Suppose if the water is having a very uh, high pH value, and suppose if the water contain lot of chlorides more than required, do not use that water. If you use that water, you know, the concrete gets affected, uh, thereby the steel may get start corroding. So to avoid this, the quality of the water should be uh, very good, should confirm to the requirements of IS-456. Now, uh, after understanding uh, two uh, important materials, after discussing about two important materials, one is cement, another is water, let us move on to the next one that is fine aggregates. Fine aggregate and coarse aggregate are most important uh, body of the concrete. See, all other things are like adhesives. Whereas this will give the mass, mass to the concrete. So fine aggregate, uh, natural sand or sand prepared from the crushed stone, gravel or such inert materials confirm to IS3. IS383 2016 has given very, very elaborate requirements for all types of sand, whether it is a natural river sand or whether it is a uh, sand made from the uh, uh, man-made sand, like uh, manufactured sand. So what are the requirements is very elaborately discussed. So in fine aggregate, aggregate from natural resources are called as NRS. It comes, flows through the river, along the riverbed it gets deposited 
and we are going to of course nowadays the use of natural rivers and is getting banned it is it's not encouraged at all people saying that to preserve the river beds uh, wherever of course is in plenty it's a different thing but still it's a natural material should not go into the concrete natural river sand whereas the second one is crushed stone sand anyway we have to use coarse aggregates uh, for the concrete making when you are when you are find when you are producing the coarse aggregate using vsi crusher if you put another uh, uh, third uh, uh, this thing uh, we will get crushed stone sand crushed stone sand is a really very good alternative to natural river sand then uh, these are the aggregates from the natural sources similarly aggregate from uh, manufactured sand what is this manufactured sand like you know bf slag sand slag is produced during the manufacture of uh, steel this slag uh, can be last for me slag uh, can be used as a replacement to river sand similarly copper industries uh, copper slag sand is also another option uh, which can be considered as an alternative to uh, river sand then there are many lab tests which are conducted like c1 analysis specific gravity bulk density uh, bulking organic impurities deleterious materials coal and lignite so these are all uh, the deleterious materials clay loam uh, five particles finer than 75 micron uh, soft fragments shale so these are all the uh, materials which are uh, uh, to be determined as far as fine aggregate is concerned then soundness test soundness test is conducted on both fine aggregate as well as coarse aggregate it's a chemical test there are many chemical tests here also in this list deleterious materials coal lignite and all but of all these deleterious material tests it is the 75 micron material test is very very important this gives an indication whether the fine aggregate is suitable for making the concrete or not if it is more fine it will demand more water more cement and the concrete may get cracked also so materials finer than 75 micron is very very important test then when you when you when you want to check the quality of sand for its gradation we do c1 analysis so when you do the c1 analysis uh, you will get fractions over 10 mm 4.75 mm 2.36 mm 1.18 mm 600 micron 300 micron 150 micron so these are all the, the various sieves we use and these are all the percentage passing requirements there are ranges in some cases so you can see from a close look at the grading limits zone 1 and 4 uh, 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 zone 1 is the coarsest and zone 4 is the finest sand zone 2 and zone 3 are the moderate sands see uh, better to use either sand belonging to zone 2 or zone 3 zone 1 is coarsest you need to make the modification little bit you have to use more sand quantity if the sand is coming in zone 1 or coarse sand if it is uh, fine sand then you have to really uh, reduce the uh, sand proportion to be used so that uh, your mix becomes uniform homogeneous uh, like that so the finest uh, uh, zone 4 is the finest whereas zone 2 and zone 3 are the moderate sand so when you carry out the c1 analysis this is what you are going to get see 300 micron c fraction 150 micron 1.18 mm 600 micron 4.75 micron and 2.36 uh, mm 4.75 mm and 2.36 mm of all these things if you observe 600 micron decides the uh, grade of zone of sand if you look at 600 micron the percentage passing is 15 to 34 for zone 1 35 to 59 is for zone 2 60 to 79 is for zone 3 and uh, uh, 80 to 100 is for zone 4 zone 4 sand should not be used in construction it is not preferred to be used zone 4 sand should be avoided only if no other sand is available then you can go for uh, zone 4 sand like in andaman nicobar islands Uh, you will get only zone for zone for sand you don't get zone one sand or zone two sand so the purpose is to do the c1 analysis to uh, grade the sand whether it is zone one zone two zone three or zone four normally all our sands come in the zones of either zone one zone two or maximum zone three zone four is very very rare occurrence so these are the c fractions it is only 600 micron which decides Which decides second micron is the only one which decides 
15 to 34, 35 to 59. There is no common here. It is very clearly given, but uh, uh, you should be uh, really uh, know what zone sand we are, we are using at the site. I told you already, 75 micron test is the most important test. 75 micron test is nothing but silt content. We use the silt word only for the river sand. Whereas finer than 75 micron is the word used for the, uh, I can say crushed stone sand as well as M sand. M sand is nothing but slag sand and things like that. So um, 75 micron is a very simple test. You take 100 grams of sand and uh, uh, do the wet sieving. All fine particles will pass through the 75 micron sieve. Whatever it remains, uh, you can really uh, take, keep it in woven and find out the weight. So whatever it is less than 75 micron pass, we can express the weight as the weight of the original sample taken. So that will tell the what is the percentage of uh, materials finer than 75 micron. So IS383 recommends uh, a value of about 3% for natural river sand, natural sand, and 15% for crushed stone sand, like uh, M, M sand uh, and also crushed stone sand. M sand, I told you, it, is, it can be BF sand or it can be copper slag sand. So uh, for both uh, crushed stone sand for M sand, the maximum limit is 15% uh, for the uh, particles finer than uh, 75 micron. Whereas in case of river sand, it is it is it shall not be more than 3%. As the silt content goes beyond 3%, the strength of the concrete gets reduced. The workability of the concrete also gets affected. So you should you should take care of this particular aspect. Now after. Uh, discussing on fine aggregates, let us move on to coarse aggregate. Coarse aggregate is really a very, very important material in concrete. We should use well-graded, well-shaped aggregates. Well-graded, well-shaped aggregates will make a dense mass. Thereby, the voids will be very less. Lesser the voids, lesser is the demand of cement paste. Lesser is the demand of cement paste, the economy can be achieved in the concrete. So. The coarse aggregates uh, uh, gradation and its shape matters a lot. After all, fine aggregates and mortar is going to get filled up between the uh, coarse aggregates. So uh, these are the coarse aggregates from the natural. There are some artificial also, but normally uh, coarse aggregate from the natural resources is used. So there are various tests uh, which are conducted on coarse aggregates, like specific gravity, uh, bulk density, loose bulk density, rotted bulk density water absorption, uh, flakiness index and elongation index, uh, aggregate impact value, aggregate abrasion value, aggregate crushing value, alkali aggregate reactivity. Apart from these eight numbers, we have one more called petrographic examination of coarse aggregates. So petrography gives the geological classification of the aggregate uh, to tell you whether this particular uh, rock, uh, which can form a good concrete aggregate or not. So this is how you, can, you need to check, especially when people come with the new aggregates uh, from a different quarry, if they want to set up a plant uh, to find out the uh, properties of the rock. Because you know, when, you, when only quarry is available, only when rock is there, you really cannot conduct other tests because you are not manufactured the aggregate yet. So these all the tests can be conducted, especially uh, sieve analysis. We can conduct only provided uh, if the, the aggregate is produced in a plant. Without the production, you will not be able to know the uh, gradation or the size of the aggregate. So this is the uh, sieve analysis uh, with uh, 20 mm, 40 mm, 20 mm, 12.5 10 mm, and 4.75 mm. On each uh, sieve, how much uh, aggregate uh, retains and how much passes, depending upon that you can calculate the cumulative uh, percentage passing of uh, aggregates. Thereby, you can accept whether the aggregate is of uh, graded or single size uh, like that. So this is an important, you can see the C fractions, uh, how much each one is retained or passed like this, C fraction of the aggregates. Then again here, like fine aggregates, we have a table which tells you whether the aggregate is graded or single size for 40 mm, 20 mm and 12.5 mm, percentage passing requirements are given. So you can really look into this, uh, taking the, your test results, and these test results can be compared with the requirements in the table 
and whether it is aggregated or single. Normally, normally 20 m size aggregates conform to single size, whereas 12.5 size aggregates conform to graded size. So when you blend 20 and 12.5 in suitable proportions, suitable means what? Conforming to IS-383 requirements. Then uh, you can get really uh, very good uh, graded aggregates, total combined graded aggregates. The next test is uh, flakiness index test or thickness gauge is used to find out the uh, flakiness. So you have to, it's a particular opening is there, you have to pass 200 pieces of the aggregates uh, through each sieve how much is retained, how much is passing, uh, do you have to note down. And then there is a formula to calculate the uh, flakiness index, which can be used. Same thing with the length gauge also, that is used for the elongation index. Uh, you need to uh, check how, how much you can uh, make it to pass through between the two uh, pillars, uh, steel small pillars. So, so that uh, the elongation index also can be determined. So in total, I can say, there are requirements for all that parameters, aggregate impact, loss and delays, crushing value, for all these things, the requirements are there. So these requirements can be uh, verified and these requirements can be checked into. So water absorption aggregates will not be normally high, about 0.5% to 1% or sometimes maybe less than 0.5% also. Flakiness and elongation index combined shall not be more than 40%. This is what gives the is 3 Abrasion resistance is 30% uh, for wearing surfaces, 50% uh, for concrete and other wearing purposes. You need not have uh, very uh, high quality, uh, which is having less than 30% for the road curve, for the wearing warehouse, other than wearing construction. It can be slightly more also. But in case of wearing surfaces, where there will be continuous movement of vehicles, the abrasion resistance is equally important. That's why it is restricted to 30%. IS-2386 various parts gives the procedure for conducting various tests and IS-2430 uh, gives the method of sampling, how to do the sampling of course aggregates. Now, after understanding the various uh, uh, various uh, uh, constituents of concrete, before we go to the concrete, let us look into some of the uh, requirements of the wall building elements. You can see in the picture, there are many wall building elements. First one is a uh, burnt clay brick. It can be of anything. It can be modular brick. It can be uh, country made bricks. It can be uh, wire cut bricks. It can be table molded bricks. Depending upon what type of manufacturing is done, you will get different qualities of the bricks. All said and done, the minimum strength shall not be less than 3.5 Newton per ohm square. This is what we look into. So you have uh, solid concrete blocks again. Solid concrete blocks really uh, saves in space used for the wall construction and equally good. You can get any quality of the up to 12 Newton per m square, 15 Newton per m square. The strength of the blocks can be there. Then you have hollow concrete blocks. Again, from the thermal comfort point of view, from the weight reduction point of view, which are coming on the column or the uh, beams, finally to the foundations can be reduced if you go for uh, hollow concrete blocks. But all these blocks, whether it is a uh, solid concrete block, whether it is a burnt clay brick, or whether it is a uh, clay made uh, blocks, clay blocks, uh, as like Wiener Burger blocks. So again, paver blocks, uh, all these needs to be tested as per IS-383, sorry, as per relevant codes uh, to check its compliance to the relevant standards. So wall building materials, brick is one of the most popular wall building materials. Bricks are classified as given below. Country made bricks, modular bricks. The ranges are only as a very approximate thing is done, not, even, not always. For, uh, but these country made bricks uh, uh, can be even lower than 3.5 uh, MPA also. So one should be careful in selecting the quality of the brick. So modular bricks uh, can be up to 10 MPA, whereas wire cut bricks, will be normally more than 10 to 20 MPA. So this is how you can really check uh, by the standard operating procedures. So IS3495 gives the method of test for the bricks, whereas IS1077 gives the specification bricks. What are the minimum values like that? So these are the standard uh, wire cut bricks. Uh, you can see which will have better finish, uh, better appearance and all. Then when it comes to bricks uh, stacked at site, like how cement is verified, there are some observations which normally people do 
with respect to bricks also. Uh, the brick should give a clear ringing tone when struck by hand. Really, I observed this. You just pat on the, uh, put a pressure on the uh, brick, you know, the sound will like a very ringing sound. The brick should not break when dropped from a height of one meter. So this is a very good indication of how hard uh, the, the brick is and whether it is able to, with, uh, because you know, normally in during construction, uh, the bricks may fall. Uh, at one meter height of fall, it should not show any cracks. That's what uh, this thing. It should not peel off when uh, scratched from nail fingers. So that means a well burned brick will not be will not get peeled off. So uh, so this is what you can observe. It should not easily break and crumble into pieces when hit from the hard surface. That means it's a impact resistance when it is hit on the hard surface. It should not bring. If it is a good quality, if it is well burned, well burnt, it will not break even if you hit from a distance also. Water absorption of bricks is another important parameter. It should not be more than 20%. This is always we can check. So burnt clay bricks uh, are of the different classes, 35 to 7, I think it is 3.5 to 35 uh, Newton per m square. 35 Newton is a very high value. For the uh, chamber bricks, uh, the, the value will be minimum 15 Newton per m square. So like that, uh, you can uh, uh, length and width and thickness is normally done using 20 bricks. 20 bricks are required to check the uh, length range, uh, width range, and thickness range. Then the, the next one is a comparison stand, which includes average comparison stand minimum of five samples, not less than so much. So these are the values you can go through uh, later. Then another important test which we do on uh, clay bricks is uh, the efflorescence test. The efflorescence test is nothing but presence of salts in the, in the bricks which will come out when the bricks are immersed in water. We don't completely immerse, only about 20 mm uh, uh, height is immersed. And then after the, after the cycles of the wall water is absorbed, we'll check for uh, efflorescence, whether it's a nil, slight, moderate, heavy, and serious. So these are the classification which needs to be uh, verified against the results. Then concrete blocks are of a different category, wall building units. So they are of uh, minimum strength will be 4 Newton per square, but individual minimum is allowed uh, 3.2 Newton per square. So for all these things, for various grades of concrete, these are the strength requirements. So density uh, shall not be less than 800 kg per cubic meter. Where the concrete is 2,400, whereas the blocks will be having a density for 1,400 kg. Then drying shrinkage is another important is because you know, these are all wall elements. So drying shrinkage plays a very important role. Uh, the moisture absorption also plays a very important role. So these are the tests which needs to be conducted. Then coming to another category of blocks called cellular lightweight uh, blocks, CLC blocks known as home and concrete is one of the most significant type of concrete used for construction purposes due to its various advantages and uses, uh, usages over traditionally uh, produced concrete. Constituents of cellular lightweight concrete are foam, uh, fly ash and cement. CLC blocks come in different densities, 400 to 600 kg per cubic meter, very, very light. They will definitely uh, float on water, but they have a very good thermal and sound insulations. The uh, medium uh, density are 800 to 1000 kg per cubic meter. So they are also uh, very good uh, having a density less than that of water. Whereas the high density blocks also are available, they are 1200 to 800 kg per cubic meter is the density of the uh, one. Now, cellular concrete blocks using uh, pre formed formed foam as per IS2185. So these are the requirements for the various grades, block density, water absorption, uh, drying shrinkage, and moisture movement shrinkage. So these are all the parameters you have to look into. Same thing continued here also, autoclaved cellular blocks, aerated blocks, as per 2185 part 3, uh, the requirements are given here. They are all can be controlled low strength materials, not a very, it will not give a very high strength also here. Now, after going through all the different walling materials, let us try to understand uh, the requirements for a cement concrete. We already studied the ingredients of concrete, starting from cement, uh, fine aggregate, uh, coarse aggregate and water. So cement uh, is uh, normally referred or the given elaborately in IS-456. There are two sections in IS-456. Section one gives a lot of information about concrete as a material. 
So one should read and go through the IS-4 physics uh, uh, section one. And section two is purely design. So design related issues will be there. Then how do you test them? When you're testing the concrete, we have the IS-1199 recently, all the parts are revised, whether it is a slum test or whether it is a flow test or whether it is a setting time of concrete or whether it is a uh, simple density of concrete, uh, whether it is, uh, I can say, flow properties of the concrete, you have to use 1199 only for the first stage. When it comes to hardened stage, uh, we have, uh, uh, when it comes to hardened stage, uh, we have IS-516, uh, which gives the various hardened concrete properties, such as compressive strength, uh, flexural strength, uh, split and cell strength, modulus of elasticity, even creep and other things are also done. But of course, creep is not covered in IS-516, uh, but all other tests are covered in IS-516. Uh, compressive, flexural, tensile, uh, then um, split tensile. Uh, so these are all the tests we do on uh, even modulus of velocity, uh, shrinkage. Uh, these are all done using various parts of IS-516. Some parts of, uh, most of the parts are available now. Okay, now workability. How do we measure the workability of concrete? We have slump test on one hand and remaining three tests, which are basically laboratory tests, whereas slump test is a very, very versatile test, which can be used both in the laboratory as well as at site. The compacting factor test and flow test and BB consistent of tests are the laboratory tests. Uh, they do not find much importance in the uh, field. Sampling of concrete not less than 0 0.02 cubic meter shall be taken from different points of the batch, shall be stacked over a non absorbent surface. Then, it's a simple test adopted both laboratory and site applicable for concrete made with maximum size of 38 mm. This apparatus contains a tamping rod, 6 mm dia, and 0.6 meter long with rounded end at one end. Slump cone mold with a base plate. You need a tamping rod if you want to cast the if you want to find out the, uh, even casting also it is required, but here what we are doing is measuring the slump only. You have to give uh, three, four layers of uh, uh, tamping, and then you have to, uh, this is a view of a slump cone uh, with its dimensions, uh, 100 mm top, 200 mm bottom, and total height is about 300 mm. So slump cone is a very, very useful equipment uh, to check the workability of concrete at sites as well as in the laboratory. Procedure, initial uh, surface of the mold shall be cleaned thoroughly. Uh, internal, sorry, not initial. Internal surface of the mold shall be cleaned thoroughly. The mold shall be placed on a smooth, horizontal, rigid, and non-absorbent surface, such as uh, carefully leveled metal plate. The mold shall be held in place uh, while being filled with concrete. The, the mold shall be filled in three approximate equal layers, and each layer uh, shall be given uh, 25 strokes with a rounded uh, end of the tamping rod. So here it comes the usage. Then the mold shall be removed uh, from the concrete immediately by raising the slowly and carefully in a vertical direction. This allows the concrete to subside and the slump value shall be measured immediately. So the height of the concrete gets reduced. It can be get it can get reduced by only 20 mm, uh, 40 mm. 60 mm, 80 mm, or 100 mm. In case of highly flowing concrete, the values will be, instead of vertical slump, it becomes a horizontal flow, high, high workable concrete mixes. So horizontal flow is a uh, measure of uh, flow of concrete in case of normally self-compacting concrete and things like that. So this picture tells you the true slump, how, do, how a true slump should look like, how a shear slump will look like, and how a collapsed slump will look like. So these are the three illustrations of different possibilities in case of a uh, slum test. So the, you can see very easily, you can very intact, very cohesive concrete mix in which the slump is being measured uh, to the top of the this thing, but keeping the invertedly uh, the slum cone. So very easy way of determining the uh, slum. Acceptance criteria, getting a true slum depends on many factors uh, such as gradation of aggregates, proportioning of materials, water content, cement content, type of admixture, etc. Collapse slump or shear slump gives the incorrect result. And if this occurs, the test shall be repeated with another sample. If in the repeat test also, the specimen shears or collapses, the slump shall be measured 
and type of slam shall be recorded. If this can happen, if the mixed region itself is wrong, uh, you, you can't expect uh, the slump, a true slump uh, in such a cases. So if it is a repeatedly failure, failing, then you need to change the mixed design or you need to change some kind of materials also. So you, you should take a call uh, as far as uh, the uh, failure of a uh, slump test is concerned. Now coming to hardened concrete test, compressive strength is the most important test, very simple test. Um, uh, and uh, this is uh, why we do this test because uh, concrete is strong in compression. To get the quality of the concrete produced, design codes are based on the concrete strength. Design codes are based on the concrete strength. Flexural strength, modulus of velocity are directly related to compressive strength. And then this test is very simple and inexpensive. Now, how it is done? We use normally 150 by 150 mm by uh, cubes. A tamping rod is used and it is filled in three equal layers by giving 35 strokes to each layer. So after giving 35 strokes to each layer, the concrete cube can be uh, kept like that for some time and then finished. The strokes uh, shall be penetrated into the underlying. Okay, this is how it is uh, uh, cube is cast. Okay, then where do you keep the specimen after 24 hours? Again, maintaining the cube for first 24 hours is also equally important because it should not lose the water uh, from the concrete cube that is cast. So uh, uh, the test specimen should be stored in a place free from violation, vibration, uh, moist air of at least 90% relative humidity and at a temperature of uh, 97 plus or minus 2 degrees Celsius for 24 hours. Uh, then um, uh, uh, from the time of addition of the water. Okay. Then after this period, the specimen shall be marked and removed from the molds. Uh, this, this is a very, very important step because you know identification of the cube mold plays a very important role. If it is not identified properly, then everybody gets uh, confused or uh, things will not be clear uh, when you are taking it to the laboratory for testing. Because identification of the cube, many times what happens, you know, people bring uh, 28 day cube for seven day and seven day cube for 28 day or the cubes which are uh, exchanged for from some other uh, uh, date of uh, casting. So this identification plays a very important role. It should be done in a very methodical and planned way. Then the testing machine which we use uh, shall be capable of maintaining a load rating of uh, rate of loading of 140 uh, kg per centimeter per minute. The permissible error shall not be greater than plus or minus 2%. Nowadays, not even 2%, it is 1% only. If it is 2%, uh, I, I, I want to cover this. It is, if it is 2%, uh, you cannot uh, call it as a class one machine. It is not a class one machine. It is, if it is 2%, it is not a class one machine. Uh, if it is uh, 1%, it can be called as a class one machine. How you will get it? When you, when you do the calibration of compression testing machine, you will come to know about the accuracy of the uh, machine. Age of test. Normally, we cast concrete cubes to test uh, to find out its strength at seven days and 28 days. You can do even for three days also. Sometimes, uh, nowadays, in a pre cast industry, uh, requires strength of the concrete to be in 10 hours, 12 hours, 15 hours, like that. Uh, what are the requirements? Normally, 10 hours means 10 MPA, 12 hours means 12 MPA. Uh, uh, then, if it is uh, 15 hours, means 15 MPA, like this. Depending upon the age of the concrete, we can uh, uh, decide. So seven and 28 days are normally uh, for most of the construction. This is the age we check at seven days and 28 days. Um, and at least three specimens from different batches shall be made uh, for testing at each selected age. So this is the uh, frequency uh, or the sampling frequency for one to five cubic meter, one sample, six to 15, two samples. 16 to 33 seven. This is for a site mixed concrete. This particular table is applicable only for a site mixed concrete. If it is an RMC, it is different. If it is RMC, uh, for every 50 cubic meter of concrete supply, we need to take one sample. What is one sample? Six cubes. Why six cubes? Three cubes for seven day 
and three cubes for 28 days. So RMC, because relatively it is supposed to be producing good cohesive homogeneous concrete, the frequency is reduced. Whereas at site, you know, sometimes you will have very difficulty in uh, 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 maintaining the uh, consistency. In such cases, better to have a lower frequency of testing. So this is what is normally uh, done. Now specimens are stored in water. Uh, you need to check the dimensions to the nearest point to mm. Uh, let me not go into the details. So you can see this is a compression testing machine of 3000 kg. So compression testing machine of 3000 kilonewton, not kg, sorry, 3000 kilonewton uh, or 300 tons. So this uh, particular uh, uh, this particular testing machine can maintain rate of loading of 5.2 kilonewton per second. Uh, which is required to test uh, 150 mm uh, cubes. So like this, uh, you have to test the cubes, the various types of failures are given here, uh, explosive failure, normal failure. You can see here, this actual failure, uh, it is an ideal failure. What I'm being shown is an ideal failure. See, if you look at these photographs, you can say, uh, you should not get horizontal cracks when you are testing the concrete cube, horizontal cracks, uh, are not supposed to occur. If the horizontal cracks occur, uh, that means the, the surfaces are not plain. There is an eccentricity. This eccentricity results in crack development. So these are the specimens with unusual failures. There are no vertical, vertical cracks are not at all there. Now coming to acceptance criteria. What is the acceptance criteria? Plus or minus 15% of the average. If more, the tests of the samples are involved. So when you, when, you, when you take the results of three cubes, find out its average and apply 0.85 times the uh, 0 .5, 0 0.85 times the average value, that should be the minimum value. And 1.15 into average value, that is plus 15%, that is the maximum value that can occur. So now, uh, you, this is a table which gives, which says, if it is M20 and above, the characteristic strength is FCK, FCK plus three is the acceptance criteria. That means if it is M20 grade of concrete, you should get 23 Newton per mm square strength. Why, why, we, why we expect so much more than 20? Because we have designed a concrete mix of M20 for a target strength of around 28 or 29. When you are when you're designing the concrete mix for 28 or 29 Newton per mm square, can't we accept at least FCK plus three in sight? We should be able to get it if the mixed region is proper. So that's why FCK plus three is the one which is specified. But here also, if something goes wrong, FCK minus three is allowed. FCK one value can be FCK minus three. So overall average should be equal to FCK plus three. So you look at this particular example. In this example, you can see sample one, 25, 26, 27, sample two, 16, 17, 18, Sample 2, 28, 29, 30. Sample 4 is 24, 25, 23. So average of four samples, 26, 17, 29. Average of four samples is 24 MPA. So it is more than FCK plus three for M20 grade of concrete. This concrete is accepted. So like this, you have to, you, you, you look at this requirement. Mean of the group of four non-overlapping consecutive test result for M20 and above grade of concrete shall be greater than FCK plus three. There are some other things, let us not worry about it. Point uh, uh, FCK plus three is what we are looking for. Same thing is shown here. We are getting average of four samples as 24 MPA, which is greater than FCK plus three, that is uh, uh, FCK plus three is uh, 20 plus three, 23 MPA. So concrete cube testing is relatively simple and most popular method of assessing the quality of concrete at site. Cube testing and maintaining a good cube test record does not mean quality control of concrete works. Often the record show excellent cube results, but the actual concrete is extremely poor. Careful monitoring and implementation of each and every codal provision is necessary for the success of a quality control to cube testing. I'm only concluding with respect to cube testing, but I have another important material to discuss that is reinforcing steel. Reinforcing steel should be of required size, strength, workable, and then chemically stable. 
1786-2008 gives all the requirements for the steel. IS-456 also recognizes these steels, uh, IS-432, IS-1786, and also uh, IS-1566 and IS-2062. So test cement, uh, steel test is done uh, to check the chemical properties and also uh, the mechanical properties and its weldability, whether it can be welded or not. So if you look at, if you are coming to chemical properties, you have wet analysis, uh, spectrometer analysis. Wet analysis is a very costly, very, very long time taking uh, method. Whereas spectrometer analysis within five minutes, we can, you can get one result. So this is optical emission spectrometer used to find out the chemical composition of steel, carbon, sulfur, and phosphorus, and many other elements. Uh, you can find out this particular thing. So requirements for chemical is given here, carbon, sulfur, phosphorus, uh, you can give uh, given combined uh, phosphorus and sulfur is also given. So the, these things shall be uh, met when you find out. Then variation with respect to the carbon, sulfur, phosphorus is also given. So that also one can use a tolerance. I can say it's a tolerance. Then uh, weight per meter is another important disputable thing many times, you know. So weight per meter, there is a tolerance for the diameter less than 10 mm, 10 mm to 16 mm and 16 mm to uh, more than 16 mm like this. So as the diameter of the bar increases, tolerance value decreases. For the lower diameter, uh, tolerance is more. So these are all the tests which we conduct on steel, tensile strength, bond strength, ductility, bendability, weldability, fatigue strength, corrosion resistance, and fire resistance. These are all the tests which in one needs to be conducted. So coming to mechanical properties, uh, we have tension test, bend test, rebend test, bond test, fatigue test. So tension test is uh, to check the strength and durability. Why it is useful? To, for, as a quality control tool at site, and also supporting the structural design. In the structural design, we might have assumed some value. Whether we are getting that value or not, we need to check here. See, these are the graphs. We may we plot uh, for the stress strain and the universal testing machine where uh, the steel bars are uh, tested and uh, with a mechanical extensometer. Nowadays, we have electronic extensometer. This is a mechanical extensometer being uh, fixed onto the steel uh, specimen. And a typical uh, failure will look like this. You can see there is a similar to cup and cone fracture, uh, which is happening in, uh, because it is a TMT bar, like a mild steel only. Acceptance criteria for mechanical properties is also given uh, for 0.2% proof stress, uh, elongation, uh, tensile strength and uniform elongation. These are all given here. One can check and uh, uh, one can see. So these are typical uh, reports which we generate in the laboratory uh, for the uh, various diameter of the steel, 8, 10, 12, uh, 16, 20, like that. So typical test report. These are all typical test. These are typical tests for chemical properties. Now, sometimes the bar fails. Why it fails? Because the, the quenching activity while manufacturing the TMT bar is not proper followly, these things can occur. So diameter is 80 mm, 0.2% proof is only 3 to 10 mm, it's nothing but mild steel. UTS is again less, 429. Elongation is more because it's a highly ductile material. It is not having higher strength. Elongation is 40%. Type of failure is ductile and carbon content is less actually. It should have been 2.5, so sorry, 0.25. 0.25 is the minimum value, whereas it is 0.23 carbon content. So similarly, you have the opposite side, very high strength, but very less ductility. So UTS is 665, elongation is only 11.3%, which is very less. Type of fracture is it's a brittle uh, fracture. First one was a ductile fracture, and this is a brittle fracture. So bend and repent test. Bend test is it's a very simple test. You have to bend it using various mantle sizes. You have to bend it into 180 degree like this. And then uh, you, there is a test called repent test. Repent test is done another sample, not on the same sample. So angle is 135 degree. And uh, this is uh, what you can see here, uh, the various mantle sizes you have to use. So this is the for in case of a bend test and this for a repent test. Then retest, re when retest becomes necessary, if a steel sample fails to conform to 
any one parameter, then retest is allowed. But in the retest case, you have to what you have to select two samples. All the both both numbers, both two numbers of the rod selected should pass. Even if any one fails, you have to reject it. You have to reject that lot. Then there are many frequency of uh, steel testing also given here. Then I will come to the last part of my presentation, that is the flooring. In the flooring, we have RCC flooring, tile flooring, mosaic flooring, ceramic, vitrified and acid resistance, uh, marble, granite, and polymer coated floors. There are many types of floors. Uh, ceramic tiles can look so pleasingly, so beautiful. Uh, vitrified tiles, glazed or unglazed, it is possible to uh, get this type of finish. So there are many, many tests as far as IS-13630 is concerned, determination of dimensions and surface. This is very important. You know, many times if the dimensions are not proper, if there is any warpage, if there is any curvature, you will not, it's not easy to fix tiles. So that's why these are all very stringent uh, test measurement, determination of water absorption, determination of moisture expansion, uh, thermal expansion, the resistance to thermal shock, modulus of rupture, so like this, many, many about nearly 13 uh, tests are there. Last one is a very important hardness test. Using a more scale hardness, uh, the scratch resistance is determined using a hardness uh, method. So number of 20 tiles are required to conduct all the tests. Complete range of tests shall be only be extended, executed uh, for lots more than 5,000. So this is a modulus of rupture testing machine. How we find out the uh, uh, strength of the load, sorry, strength of the tile. Uh, so these are the arrangements wherein we can uh, keep the weights and uh, get the required strength. Then specifications, water absorption uh, greater than 10%, uh, between 3 to 6% and less than 3%. Like this, various grades are available. So this is how uh, the, uh, the tile industry uh, is very, very following the stringent manufacturing procedure. Still, we find a lot of issues with respect to tiles. So with this, I would like to conclude my presentation. Uh, in order to prevent uh, deterioration of structures uh, within a short span of its life, it is essential to use good quality materials free from defects. It is possible to ensure good quality of construction by conducting appropriate field and laboratory tests on materials of construction. So with this uh, concluding remarks, I would like to thank you all uh, for your uh, uh, kind attention and patience hearing. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Uh, one minute, sir. If there are any questions, you can uh, interact with us, sir. If you have any questions, you can interact with us, sir. Participants. Akpita, madam. Uh, thank you very much, sir. You have uh, presented well. Okay. I think uh, most of our uh, Nirmiti Kendra engineers are exposed to the uh, knowledge, whatever the experience you have shared. Okay. Uh, Venkatesh Babu sir has joined. I think I, uh, he is having uh, some network issue. Okay. okay. He is able to join. Uh, we can. Sir? Good evening, sir. Okay. Good evening, sir. Lagandra, sir. Good evening. Good evening, sir. Good evening. Yeah, yeah. You are audible, sir. You are audible. Yeah. Thank you very much, sir, for uh, your uh, nice presentation. I think all of our uh, Nirmiti Kendra engineers and other participants are benefited. And yes. you are given in detail as per the IS course of practice of testing of building materials. I joined uh, just when you are uh, taking on uh, a bricks, uh, a test on bricks as per IS. Hmm. I have only one uh, question uh, from my side, sir, actually. 
sir sir uh, many of the manufacturers of uh, this uh, hollow block or anything except uh, the where the piece is maintained but uh, many tests we did uh, for a third party but majority is failed in hollow blocks especially it may be solid or hollow i don't know what is the reason is it maybe a mixed design or uh, what is the reason sir mixed design and also not using proper uh, cement content and also so stand uh, the manufacturer there yeah. is a meeting but other city is not uh, Yes. You you take you take Basan Petans or uh, the Atco Blacks. They give a very high strength, more than ten MPa. Okay, sir. Uh, more than ten MPa strength is obtained, and uh, in other cases uh, we have this problem. And also the all these blocks are used as infill material. Uh, whether any minimum uh, that uh, compressive strength has to be followed, sir, as an infill material. Infill material means uh, again. Uh, there are two types of blocks. One is load bearing and non-load bearing. Huh. I'm asking. Uh, what about uh, no? Uh, this is a frame structure. Infill blocks. No, they are also better to maintain that minimum quality of three point five per bricks and four newton per square per blocks. Uh, earlier it was there in the code. Load bearing and non-load bearing. They are removed it now. Yeah, uh, I have another only one small uh, clarification, sir. You have mentioned uh, M sand and uh, the other uh, river sand uh, hmm. uh, passing to some uh, last uh, seventy-five micron. There is a difference. Why like that, sir? So manufactured no. should match with river sand uh, at least zone two or anything. No, when it comes to seventy-five micron passing, silt uh -huh. content is one uh, which is which will reduce the strength if it is in a river sand. Whereas in the sand, having particle finer than seventy micron, not okay. not necessarily decrease the strength. It will in uh -huh. fact improve the particle packing. Okay. Thank you very much for your support, sir. I hope all the participants are benefited with all the testing and material. Because even though we know the procedure, even observed the, when you are testing the institution, they are not submerged in water before testing, twenty-four hours. What generally I observed the mistakes. I request all the Nirmiti Kena engineers to follow the guidelines given by AIS Court, and uh, it is the required. And also I will share the uh, resume and also contact details of uh, Dr. Nagendra sir. For any clarification, you can just uh, contact him directly. Now I request the participants uh, any queries are there. We will take sir. Sanat Kumar, any questions in chat box? Uh, part box, uh, it's really wonderful class. Thank you, sir. Okay, okay. If anyone is interested, they can ask the questions, sir. Yeah. Request participants. So, any questions, sir? Please uh, ask the speaker directly. Yeah. If there is no questions, uh, we can close the meeting. Yes, sir. Any questions sir, from the? Participants, uh, thank you very much, sir. Uh, you were a nice presentation, and uh, it is uh, very informative for all the engineers to follow the guidelines of uh, testing of materials as per IS yes, uh, course of practice. Uh, thank you very much uh, on behalf of the Skill Center and my own. I'll uh, thank you once again and uh, uh, accepting your invitation and uh, sparing your valuable time with us. Thank you once again to you, sir. And also, thank, thank all the participants also. Yes, and also, this uh, YouTube lecture is available. As you can recall, uh, and uh, any time you can see also that is also option created for engineers. Uh, now I request uh, Sanat Kumar to conclude the session and uh, close the meeting. Sanat Kumar. Sir, one. I need one minute, sir. Hello. I need one minute. I want okay. to share the. I want to share the feedback for him, sir. I okay. need. No issue, no issue, no issue. Okay, okay. Thank you.
Uh, I would like to thank uh, uh, Dr. Nagendra sir for his wonderful pre presentation. I hope our uh, Nirmiti Kendra engineers are uh, um, enhanced with the knowledge or the experience, whatever he have. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, I would like to thank on behalf of the uh, BM VNTFSA uh, and our director and uh, Venkatesh Babu sir, uh, um, uh, this uh, whatever the in charge is there now, is a head for the center now. Uh, and even uh, with the uh, on behalf of the Nirmiti Kendra engineers, those who are the participants, I would like to uh, thank sir for his wonderful presentation. Uh, and uh, please, I request all the participants to give the feedback, which is uh, shared in the chat box for the uh, certification purpose and for the uh, attendance purpose. Uh, thank you, sir. Once again, I, uh, I thank uh, Nagendra sir for his wonderful presentation. Thank you very much. Thank you very there much. There is a small announcement. Tomorrow, tomorrow there is no webinar. It will be yes, postponed to tomorrow Monday. Tomorrow and day after tomorrow. Yeah, only Monday will be there. Tomorrow, yes, the webinar is scheduled on Monday. Uh, please note, we will share the link uh, tomorrow morning. Thank you okay. once again to all of you. Okay, sir. Okay, Thank sir. you, sir. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you, Nagendra, uh, Nagendra sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you.